Zoe says, I break. It's for my friend Zoe Hansen. Roxy Hotel. Dirty martinis, cold french fries. Zoe's on stage in her rainbow glory, wraps red dress, leopard stilettos. She looks like a million dollars even when she only costs 49 cents. <laughs> she takes the mic. I was born broken, Zoe says. We were all born broken. And just like my sister Zoe, I was born broken too. But I was born broken. What are all of these pieces made of cracking wide open like souls and lies breaking? Breaking. I break. I break like a guitar string, like a broken chord. I break like C sharp. I break in the elevator. I break when you flip me over and ask for eggs in the morning. I break beneath big hands and leather belts. I break in fast cars. I break, I break to brass and bass and fiddles and hops, but not to drums. I break too softly for percussion, at least in the beginning. I break quietly on rooftops and subways and anything that moves. I break to late 60s Dylan and 90s Lucinda. It takes just three days to break. I break into jagged pieces, men slip their throats on my jigsaw edges and never bleed. It's only my blood dripping down sheets and white tiles each time I break. This one's called Fearless, My City. You're too stupid to be afraid, my mother used to say. And maybe I was. Wandering the streets, running subways, entranced by the red hook light hitting metal, by the clotheslines, the pigeon coops. Getting lost, coming home after dark, keeping secrets. Painfully shy. My fear of people never caused fear of my city. I was not afraid at age seven in Brownsville going to the store with my cousin, dollar bills tucked under our arms just in case. Not afraid at nine walking to Coney Island along McDonald Avenue, the rank smell of caged chickens following us, looking to find out it was all still there in the winter. Not afraid of exploring bridges with my two silly friends from day camp. Even the bridges close to foot traffic. Authorities once called to rescue us over 59th Street. I was not afraid the night I rode up to El Barrio alone because the young lords had taken over the church and I was convinced that the cause would keep me safe. And it did. I learned the rules of the street along the way. Who to avoid, when to keep your mouth shut, stay out of doorways, walk like you know where you're going, never take your money out, jump the gate, climb the fences, run faster than the knife that might cut your young pretty face and don't tell anyone. Survival skills. And no matter how smart, young girls do not get away unscathed. Some bad people, some bad nights, but I was never afraid of my city. Saturday evening, September 17th, 2016. We're sitting in the garden at 6th and B waiting to do some music, some poems. My friend Ron texts me from Prague. Explosion, dumpster, Chelsea, multiple injuries, pipe bomb, Seaside Park, second device, 27th Street, FBI, Homeland Security, on scene, cause not yet determined. Images flood my mind as I read. Eagles of death metal, Paris. Pulse, gay club, Orlando. Young people bleeding on the dance floor, dying. The screams, the smell, the towers, the falling bodies. Tonight, 29 injured. Were they sleeping, watching television, eating dinner? Do we have the right to be angry? What about our bombs? What about the Syrian children? What about my friends? What have we done? We are here making music and poetry, almost as far away as Ron in Prague. But here, we are all here. Greetings to everyone, messages Ron. Be safe, my darlings.
More texts. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? I do the checklist. My son's in New Jersey. My daughter's at home down here. But wait. Gerald lives in the Chelsea Hotel. And Janice and Kevin and Jackie and Gary and Michael and Tessa Lou and my cousin Wynn, who hates me. They're all in the neighborhood. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Before 2001, we never took attendance. Not even in the 70s when they called it Fear City. But we were never afraid of our city. We were always home. On rooftops, street corners, broken glass, basement clubs, there was no word for homeless. We were always home. I am not afraid of my city, but neither am I intrepid. I had my first panic attack on an Upper East Side Avenue, armies of tight-faced blonde women marching by. I'm afraid to ride a bicycle in traffic. I have trouble catching my breath when the subway comes to a halt between stops. And my heart races when the elevator stops between floors. But I'm no longer afraid of people and I'm not afraid of my city. I hate every new wrinkle and crumbling tooth but I am glad that I did not grow up in fear and I got to grow older. I remember that feeling of invulnerability. They say all young people feel it, but I don't think they do anymore. I see fear in their eyes. What in the world, like Bowie said, what in the world can you do? So we live, I live. Newscasters look at us with sad eyes and sometimes we get scared too. But when I lie in bed at night, 13 flights above the river, listening to rain or traffic noise, I am struck almost senseless by the lights of the bridges and the safety of my concrete walls, and I am not afraid of my city. This, this is actually part two. One week later, bring it home. One week later, dog walkers steer their packs around baby strollers and pavement cracks. Seven days flew by unless you were there, unless you were the one behind shattered glass, watching the movie at the Chelsea Cinema, making a U-turn on 23rd, calling hospitals, looking for your loved one, remembering the posters on brick walls in Union Square, the photos, missing. Have you seen her? Have you seen him? When you are locked in fear, time moves slowly. Recall explodes as you try to sleep or cook. Shut your eyes and you are right back in the car, the club, the building, the marathon, the tower. Lives ending like poems in the middle. We recap. A bumbling terrorist to sleep in a doorway, a pressure cooker, a suitcase, five family members, a suspicious father, a wife in Pakistan, a mother in Turkey, a clown candidate pointing his finger. See? I told you so, he crows. I was right. The three-card Monty game has returned in near human form and there are no winners. Don't be manipulated, we are told. Do not live in fear. Do not give in. We're New Yorkers. We're a tribe. We're resilient. Can't keep us down. But still. Eric over here is a young black man. Tell his friends, I'm late for work, but I'm afraid to run for the bus. Hassan worries about his mother riding the subway alone, head down. She's never been attacked, but still. Beth sees a backpack in the corner of a club. She and her friend joke about you see something, you say something. Yeah, it's got to be harmless, but their eyes keep returning to it. But still. In the late 80s, Rick and I were always out on the run, uptown and down. Footloose and fancy free, we called ourselves. Footloose, fancy free. Any trouble we got into was of our own making. I needed to lose a lot of teeth and shoot a lot of dope before the police began to notice me, before my neighbors wanted me gone. All Jamal needs is a prayer rug. All Juanito needs is a roll in his R's and some salsa in his steps. All Teresa needs is to linger on the corner a little bit too long. All Margo needs is five inch heels and an Adam's apple. What about you? What do you need? All I'll 
all our lives matter. All our lives matter. Yeah, they matter to God or Allah or Buddha, depending on your belief. They matter to the air or the clouds or the ocean because we're particles of the universe. But here on Earth, history, eyes, ear, and sound tell a different story. Still, still, the week flew by, routines re returned, stores opened, free coffee for the first responders, small business crawls, we made music, we made art, as usual, except for some. Still, bring it close, bring it home, back to the beginning, where we live, where we love. Last year, Yom Kippur approaching, Ali, the counterman at my favorite bodega, held my hand and he wished me an easy fast. You and me, he said, smiling into my eyes, we're the same, no difference. The religious men of my heritage don't touch my hand, but they invite my son to carry the Torah, even though he was never by misfit, and they dance in the Stanton Street Synagogue. And where is home? Ali is gone. Three kids cracked his head open when he caught them stealing beer. After his hospital stay, he moved to the Bronx. How do we get home? We start where we stand, looking into eyes instead of away, asking how instead of why. I remember Ali's eyes that day he held my hand. No different, he said, you and me. We're the same, bringing it home. Thank you.